Wow. This is the location of both double homicides in the early 20s. Hey guys, uh, Randy here, and welcome aboard the CB Traveler Channel. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I know I am. I'm excited for this. We are heading to a place that I've been wanting to, wanting to come to for over a year now since I heard about it. Uh, it's called Ruby, Arizona. And uh, look, there's, they've had some rains, just like everywhere else, had some rains. So, um, we, we crossed this creek probably seven or eight times. So my first thoughts are going to be... Um, if after a monsoon or something it probably flash floods through here so I'd be careful uh, if you're gonna come down here I would just check the weather and even try and reach the uh, the campground host to see what the weather's like down here oh, another puddle they're at least they're not too deep and the, the road so far it's paved probably 95% of the way so it's uh, it's a nice little drive picturesque and uh, yeah the last probably five miles I would say is gonna be dirt road and so far it's been really good except for where you cross um, there's some washboarding oh hold on <laughs> I think I gotta stop right here I just saw something over here I saw this old dead tree growing out of this rock and you could see, check that out, you can see how the roots have just, uh, over the years, made their way down to reach that water. Wow, that is so cool. And then, uh, off, I mean, let's see if I can get a, what's down this way? Yeah, that water is really clear right there. I just love how that root system is just embedded into that granite, that rock. And check out that, that branch or that tree right up there. That thing's the same way. It's just the rock's not exposed. Now oh, that's cool. Oh, and here, there's looks like a, some foundation to the buildings that were here. Now this road we're following was the original uh, wagon train trail back in the uh, late 1800s when this town was founded. Yeah, look at that building. There's some more foundation right there. Yeah, you can see it gets a little bit rutted after some rains. Now this road will continue on through uh, to, um, it goes past the, the Ruby entrance turnoff, and you'll come out on uh, I-19 just above uh, Nogales, Arizona. So yeah, that'd be, it's a little bit longer drive. I imagine it's probably like this the whole way down there. Anyways, the sun's coming up. We're early. Um, they don't open until 9. Uh, but I just like driving out here in the sun with the sunrise. And this is our turnoff. There it is. It's Ruby, Arizona. I'm so excited about this. This is uh, the second largest uninhabited ghost town in Arizona. So this is going to be really cool. Now, I had to go online and email to to make arrangements to camp. So just give yourself plenty of time. And if she doesn't respond right away, don't worry, she will. Yeah, like I said, we're early. It's only about 8 o'clock. They don't open until 9. But uh, if if you need to, you can walk through the gate here to go make arrangements with her. But uh, since we have arrangements made already, um, she said we can just uh, undo the gate and then drive on through and then make sure I have it closed behind me. But at 9 o'clock, she'll open the gate so you can, you can drive in and you can do a day pass or you can camp like, like uh, we're going to do. It's uh, $20 per person per night to stay and uh, it's dry camping. There's no hookups or anything like that. I can tell you I have no signal on my phone. So I doubt that it'll be any better better in the town. Maybe if you 
Yep, you can see part of the town up there. But if you can uh, climb one of these hills, maybe you'll get a little reception. But right now, I have no reception. Oh, wow. Well. I've seen this truck on pictures before, this old uh, rusty thing. I, w I hope, I'm hoping if it stays clear like this, I might be able to get back out here and get a Milky Way picture with this truck in the foreground. But it's calling for some high clouds, so I don't hold much hope for that. But wow, yeah, this is beautiful. And this, look, there's, there's already some old buildings right there. <laughs> There's a lot of oak in here. I didn't realize there was a, that, that much oak in this area. But yeah, imagine, and this is in the summer, a lot of these trees are gonna be filled up with uh, leaves. So it'll be really shady then. Get through this mud puddle. And you gotta try and find the, uh, the host and see and get checked in so she can take us to where we're gonna camp. Check in to the right, okay. We'll head up here and, uh, and I'm gonna get checked in. We found it and uh, yeah, this is where she stays at, the host. She's got lots of firewood up here, probably for her though. And that there's more there's more houses up here even or more buildings well that was easy and she gives you you fill out some paperwork and then she gives you a little safety information places not to go to that sort of thing it turns out those two houses above hers are ones used for storage and so there's not much to see up there but right now she's driving us through town and she's gonna show us where we're gonna be camping and check out this, uh, this is lake. She says there's ducks in there. It's kind of like a wildlife refuge right there. And uh, yeah, I've been waiting to see these uh, the, the tailings up here. Oh, this is such a pretty drive driving through here. Oaks lining the trees. I'd really love to see this in the summer. But yeah, you can see up ahead, it opens up into, it looks like sand dunes. But they're not. It's not sand. It's tailings from uh, from the mine over the years. Check that out. That is. It's just weird to see that out here. But uh, yeah, we're gonna stop here and decide where we want to camp. Well, this will give you a little bit of an overview of the town. You can see the mill down there, and a lot of the old buildings that are still standing the residences and uh, straight ahead is out uh, the road you came in on which you would take a left to get back towards tucson take a right to get over towards nogales her eyes were stained glass like blue under the glacier runs nowhere we're going all right well we uh picked our spot and as you can see it's it's a really good spot here uh, it's a little bit away from the town, but we picked a place that if somebody else comes to camp tonight that will be a little bit away from everybody. And we're surrounded by this cool little pond and there's uh, lots of ducks out there swimming around. Yeah, I think we got a good spot here. Check this out. That yeah, the pond around us almost three sides. It's so pretty out here. And quiet. There's nobody out here yet. And it's probably it's after nine, like nine thirty or nobody out here yet. But what I wanted to do is um when we pass through those tailings, uh, I saw up on the hill um looked like some old rock foundations to something. I wanted to kind of scramble up there for a second. And then I, there's a cemetery out here I wanted to try and catch. It's a little bit of a hike to the cemetery, so I wanted to get that. All right, here we go. Now you can see those rocks up here. I wonder what these are. Now there's nothing 
when you check in, they give you a map, and there's nothing on here about these. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's just throughout the years, with all the excess rocks, people have built foundations, shelters. But I, I noticed over here, these rocks have some sort of grout or something in them, in the joints. But yeah, I'm not sure sure what there. Maybe it's maybe it's to hold No, this is a building of some sort. Hmm. All I know is you get a, a great view. <laughs> there's there's the lake below us and the tailings and you can see how that lake is draining off into the tailings. That's the direction of the cemetery. And then I wanted to uh check out this side. I, I don't know if it's the same a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, just another. Some sort of shelter. I'm not sure. There's nothing to tell me what this is. But I thought it was kind of neat. And I really love the view up here. This is so unique for this area. To, it, it's, uh, I still can't get over it, how much it looks like a sand dune. But yeah, we got to walk across there to get to the cemetery. So I have a, a, a some sort of idea where that cemetery is, and we're just going to walk across the sand, and also somewhere right into the in this tree somewhere, between me and the lake is like one of the, the original store. It was like built in the 1800s. So on the way back, we'll see if we can't find where that is. But you guys, look, look how look at these oaks. It's just oak-lined pond. And this is a camp area uh, that you can stay in as well. Um, she said last weekend it was, it was pretty busy. But yeah, let's uh, take a little stroll through here. See if I can't find the trail to that cemetery. So that little uh, building on the right, that's your uh, typical bathroom out here. They do have doors. It just doesn't look like it there. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Walking across in the middle of these tailings is this old <laughs> valve. And you can see those uh, pipes not doing so well. Here's a look. That's back towards the lake that goes off into the valley. And then the water in front of us, I believe, is over overflow from that lake. I saw, as I was walking I saw this. I, I like these patterns when the when the soil dries it leaves those hexagonal type patterns. And this end out towards the end of the tailings this is pretty. I bet at sunrise this is pretty. I'm sorry sunset and it's just over the years, all this dirt's just eroding away from all the excess water and the rains, slowly but surely being taken down into that valley. All right, well, somewhere over here is the trail out to that cemetery. So it's probably about a 15 minute walk, that's what I've heard. So I'm just gonna try and find the trail and I will uh, Pick up when I find it. On the trail, you're going to see these little crosses on these stakes. That's going to be the way it's showing you how to get out there. And you can see uh, there's not a lot here. I think there's more off in the distance. But I think this is all I really needed to see. There's no uh, 
names or dates on these. So there's not much to see, but it's worth it. So back at the uh, campground I was showing you earlier, um, this is the location of the original store, and it's built in the 1800s. Doesn't look like there's much left. It's just uh, some adobe, a little bit of adobe ruins here. Yeah. Boy, there is not much left here at all. Looks like just two corners of the building, really. It's all just melting right back into the earth with the rains and the winds. But yeah, this was the first the first store that was built in the town. And a little bit later, uh, we're going to go see the, uh, the third store, which uh, has some interesting history by itself. All right, well, I think I'm going to head back to camp and grab something to eat, rest a little bit, and then uh, check out some of the sites, some of the old buildings in this town. That's what I really came for. All right, well, I feel rested. Got something to eat. Much better now. So what do you say? Let's check out some of these old buildings. This is the Hutchison residence. Um, they called him Hutch. And he was the master mechanic. And it was his job to keep the mill operational. Not much left of this one, is there? Man, just some a couple of the outside walls and barely holding on at that. Check out that big old crack. It's leaning. Yeah, not much left here. You can see um, how it has that number. And that corresponds, 17 corresponds to the map they hand out when you first get here. And there's a little bit of history on the back side of that map. That's like an old bird nest here. Even the birds don't think it's too safe to be in here. <laughs> oh, there's some, uh, it's got some equipment still left in here. Check it out. Yeah, what's holding this up? This doorway. Yeah, this is n probably not too safe walking in here. Wow. Well, might as well keep going now. Hurry through here, but yeah. Man, just half of the walls are gone. Oh, well, looks like we have some company. Really, they're the only ones I've seen so far. Hmm. Yeah, there's that crack from the inside. Boy, I don't know how much longer this guy has left. Anyways, let's go uh, see what we can find down the road a little bit. Well, we don't have any information on this one, but it's still interesting and I'm still going to take a look at it. You look at, yeah, adobe, everything's peeling off. Look how thick those walls are. What do we got back here? Now yeah, this one's a little bit better shaped than the last one we looked at, but still, for being as old as they are, 100 years old, a century old. I could just imagine kids playing back here, trying to rustle the chickens back into the yard or something. Wow, look, just chunks are just starting to break off. And, and check out in the gable. There's a, even st uh, adobe up in the gable to help with insulation or just maybe to help hold the trusses up. I don't know if I've seen that before. Hmm. Yeah, the whole this whole side is caved in. This was probably a porch, it looked like. And I, I just, this, <laughs> this would be creepy in uh, in Halloween or something to come out here. Let's see if we can walk around uh, on the inside. I don't know. <laughs> it looks pretty bad. Let's uh, let's see what we can see in here. 
somebody left a barbecue. That doesn't look too original. Yeah, look at that. That whole thing is about to just another big windstorm. Maybe that's going to come down. Boy, there's some heater. Somebody left a heater in here. Wow. All that hard work that people put in to these back when they were built and they're just uh, abandoned. Left to the elements. Oh, somebody left a bed in here. An old hutch. I wonder how old that is. They did say that uh, before that um, they were having problems with people coming in and taking stuff. It's an old, that's like a foldable bed or something. It's old school, not a lot of springs left uh, on there. Keep you comfortable, but yeah. <laughs> Even my bed looks more comfortable and the truck looks more comfortable than that. Anyways, uh, there's a building next to us I wanted to check out. There's no information on that one either, but it looks like it was maybe another residence. Still looks cool as heck, doesn't it? That old adobe brick. Porch falling down and decrepit. Man, look at that. I don't know if you could find, this is so cool, just being able to walk around and just, oh, they tried putting, is that screen or plastic? Maybe they tried putting plastic in there to keep some of the elements out a while back, but yeah, plaster still sticking on. Oh, this looks like it was maybe like a walk-in pantry or some of the shelves. It's all leaning and falling over. I just love walking around in this kind of this stuff. I wonder if this was kind of like, maybe this was like a living room over here. It's hard to, t it's hard to say. But man, I'm not even going to walk in there. Not much to see. But, you know, yeah, you can see that's the inside of that storage or whatever that was in there. But, all right, well, let's, uh, we got a lot more to see. On my way up to the other buildings, I saw the, looks like this was a swimming hole. It's probably, what, uh, 20 feet across, probably four and a half feet deep, four feet deep. That would have been, and during the summer, that would have been uh, <laughs> nice. Now, this is around 4,200 feet in elevation, so it's uh, probably going to get in the 30s up here tonight. I couldn't imagine swimming in there in the winter, but in the summer, it's probably pretty nice. Well, I see this building up here. Um, according to the map, this was the an office safe. It's where they kept their funds, documents. That that sort of thing would have been kept in here. Now, there's a big hole in it. <laughs> I can see oh, just corrosion. It was concrete, but I still don't see any reinforcement. It's all rock. Grout filled, no reinforcement, and then it has a wooden doorway, a big old vaulted, it's about really a rock wall covered with, uh, it's with concrete on the outside, but must have done the job, and it looks like they kind of poured the top as a separate unit up there. When I first saw it, it looked like a jail or something, like maybe the one, not just like it, but kind of like the one in Quartzite. And inside here somewhere, there used to be a, a lumber building, an office or something back here. There's nothing left of it. I'm looking for it, but there's nothing. I can't see anything. And I think that was where the safe it was close to where the safe was so 
Maybe that was just uh, an office for everything that was in that safe. This is cool here. This was a hospital. Now, there's not a lot left, but this was a nine-bed nine hospital. And uh, Dr. Woodard, he had an office here. And his wife actually was a nurse here. They moved, uh, he moved to Tucson in the 40s, which is mostly when this town closed down was in the 40s. Just look at that. <laughs> the walls are getting really thin. See if I can show you back here. I noticed that when I walked in, you get a better angle, just how thin these walls are getting sitting in the, the weather. Just a little corner, a little bit of plaster still attached in there. I wonder what these little wood, is that just to help hold the plaster on, maybe? I'm not sure. Another thing I noticed, let, watch, let me show you. They're, these big old long nails they use, they just drove it straight into the adobe. Wow. Let's see if I can raise it up here a little bit to give you a better view office uh, he did surgery the dr woodard did surgery up here he did house calls and uh, he after he moved to tucson he had a heart attack and died but yeah now after seeing those nails i do have to tell you walking around i do find a lot of those long nails in the road so if you come in here oh that's cool a bench just sitting right there but if you're driving up here, try and stick to the road as much as you can because you might get a nail or something. Oh, these are interesting. Yeah, they even have the, I noticed they have the um, uh, adobe bricks going all the way up on the gable end here too. So that was probably a common thing up here. Must have just helped hold the trusses up. But yeah, these were... These were bunk, this was a bunkhouse. There's two buildings that were bunkhouses. And this is where they held the, uh, the single men. They'd sleep here and then they would have dinners at the, uh, at the uh, boarding house. Okay, there's uh, doors, three doors on each side. And they're not huge. So there's probably two, a couple guys in here. I'd say it's probably nine feet by nine feet. I had to guess. But yeah, there's enough for enough for two guys comfortably in there. Yeah. And they all seem to be pretty typical. The occasional hornets nest up in the roof. <laughs> That's something you gotta be careful. It's it's a little chilly at night here now, but during the summer I imagine hornets might be uh, a thing out here to think about. I I did see one or two, but they're not too bad. That looks that looks so cool. Just I I just keep wondering what the guys walking around after a hard day's work coming in here and kicking back. Yeah yeah. See that adobe goes all the way up on the gable, so that just must have been the way they did things out here. I saw this, Let's see if I can get up a little bit closer, but it looks like they did some patchwork, some holes and they just started, or maybe that's just clay mixed in with it, just trying to patch some holes or something. Look at that wood is just embedded in there with it when they built it. They build it, frame it up, stick the wood in there, the headers, frame around it. Now this side doesn't look as good as the other side. Even on the outside, you can see it's, it looks a lot more weathered. So this must be like the weather, the, the side that gets the most weather. But still looks better <laughs> than this one does. Goodness gracious, this one is, uh, wow. This thing is really coming down. I see a little trail where people go inside. So I'm going to do that. Oh, but I got to say, this looks a little more fancy. I wonder if this, this was a, 
I wonder if this was where the boarding, no, this is a bunkhouse. But there's a walkway to get through to the other side, so maybe this was, I don't know. It's got more decorations, so maybe the superintendent or something, or not the foreman, not superintendents, but the foreman maybe lived in these. It's hard to tell with all this over, this growth back here, what it was like back then. But they had to have had a, a another way to get in from that side. Let me make my way out here. <laughs> I, this one, there's not a lot to be able to get into to see because it's all collapsed and caved in. Let's see if I can get a, a look over here. Yeah, it wouldn't even be safe to try and get in there. Oh, what's this? Looks like some sort of plug or something. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be neat. The Duff House. This is where the, the mine superintendent lived. So he's the big guy. And uh, his wife, she, she was an anesthesiologist at the hospital. They also had a daughter that lived here, and she was actually born here in Ruby. Jazz was looking at the history of it, I wanted to check this one out to see see what it was like, what the big guy what the big guy, how he lived. Well that wood looks weathered, doesn't it? It's not adobe, it's all wood, so at least I don't see any. Looks like it's all wood structure. So I wonder if he had it built or if the mine actually owned it. And he he just took over. Wow, whitewashed cabinets. Yeah, they had it nice here. Look at that. Big old living room. The inside walls don't look too thick. Yeah, maybe maybe they were two by fours. Cool place. <laughs> the wall says cool place. Not much insulation up there. I wonder what is that? Was chimney maybe for a stove or something that was in there? Hmm. Yeah, a couple bedrooms. That's a big room right here. I wonder if this is like a living room looking out with a patio. And there's the bathroom. Wow. Yep. It's almost like you can still hear the kids coming in and playing, running around on a wooden floor. I don't know if that was fire or I don't think that's mold. <laughs> but I don't see much insulation, so they didn't put a lot of effort into that part of it. But they did have a view. Look at that. Wow. Well, let's we'll see what's out here. The the porch is all falling apart. I, I wonder if if you had time out here just kind of looking around if you had any you know, I don't know if they allow mine detecting here. Le not mine detecting, um metal detecting. So I didn't ask that, but I would imagine not just cuz they don't want you taking stuff that you'd find. All right, well, I'm going to work my way up this hill. And this is where the mine, the, the actual mine, the, I guess the money maker of this town was. You can see there's a warehouse and the mill is up here. So this is the warehouse. Um, when you check in, she tells you that some of these buildings are closed off. You can't go inside. So if the door is not open, even looks like there's a sign here telling us not to go in there, but yeah, if the, if there's a door not is not open and letting you in, don't go in because it's uh, probably too dangerous to go in. But a little bit earlier, I was going in some pretty dangerous ones. Maybe they're just storing some stuff in there. I'm not sure. Oh, there was a fire here at one point. We had something burned down there. But the other thing is, check this out. I noticed this. They still have adobe bricks on pallets. Look at that. 
I wonder how old those are. The pallets don't look... I mean, I don't know how to tell the age of a pallet, but they don't look that old. Some little shack here. Cartographer. Ah, oh, map maker. Well, I, I did hear that they had to have... There was a couple guys that had to survey the mine. And it, I couldn't imagine that job going down. Like, especially if you've been up to Jerome, surveying that mine. That thing's like deeper than the Empire State Building is. How oh, cool. Check out this wall, how it just kind of disappears off into the trees. It's just a retaining wall is all that really looked like. And then this is the, the mine shaft. You can see right over here is a big pile of wood. Look at this thing. It looks like it's leaning and falling over. <laughs> Man, yeah. Interesting. And you can see that the lumber that's laying on the ground there, that's covering up the mine shaft. I, you could lean over it and feel the nice cool air blowing up from down there. Let's see, we have the uh, assay office here. Well, that's really old as well. <laughs> Just like the wall. What do we got in here? Well, must have been some testing equipment. Because this is the guy that, these are the guys that tested to see how pure the metals they were pulling up, or minerals were. Yeah, a little trough right there. Oh, that's a cool picture. I like how those doors are all lined up. Let's see if I can get in there, yeah. So yeah, all, yeah all, that makes sense. All these shelves, they would have held samples. It looks like a ladder right there on the right side of that door. Hmm. Little trinkets people have found and left up here. That's cool. No insulation here either. Adobe, that's good insulation. But yeah, look at that. They're they're trying to hold stuff up. You can see some lumber tied in up there, holding that wall in. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to come down here. Look at this. It's collapsing. Maybe they brought those in trying to fix some stuff up. Just that now not enough to do it. Just look at this. You can look at that wall, just caved right in. And the roof came down, mostly came down with it. Man, I was going to say, I'm glad I was able to get up here because you just never know. Um, when we were talking to the caretaker, she said they had some, step out here. She said they had some windstorms and she kept hearing noises and wasn't sure what it was. And it was parts of buildings coming down. So, yeah. Some bad storms, they, uh, they'll they tear these things up. Be sad to see, but that's why I wanted to come down here. Check it out. How neat is that? That's a pretty picture of that tree, the blue sky behind it. That old weathered wood. That's beautiful, the silvery looking wood. Wow. Just wow. And this is the the mill. I'm not going to walk all the way down there, but um there she was saying that the top of this hill above that mill, it's all getting undermined from the rain and it's starting to collapse, so I'm not going to to go up there. Or down there I'm just gonna check out the view you can still get a, a good idea what it looks like well still holding up pretty good there's a cantilevered deck out there it looked like Let's see if I can get another view down here here we go yeah you can see not a whole lot to look at in there, but it gives you an idea how tall that thing. 
It's like two levels. You can see scaffolding or a stairway going down to that lower level. And then there's the uh, lake. That's by where we're camped. How pretty would that be in the summer with all the leaves on those? And this is just some tailings and fill dirt at a different level. Good overview of the town right there. That house you see off in the distance, that was, uh, I believe that was Dr. Woodard's house. When I was looking into coming down here, I saw this old truck in some of the pictures. And uh, instantly I thought, oh, I would just love to get a Milky Way picture, do some light painting on this thing. That would be amazing. And it's even facing the right direction. And it's Milky Way season now, so, but like I said, they're uh, expecting higher clouds to come in tonight, so getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll see if it, uh, what the clouds look like, but that would be amazing. And look at this old, this old carcass, look at that, <laughs> fenders, body, like an old roadster or something. And here's a, another example of the uh, the privies, they call them out here. But, all right, well, all right, well, I'm going to, just down the road, is to me the more interesting stuff. So I'm kind of saving maybe the best for last. But uh, this is going to be cool. This is the, in this south end, uh, this was built in 1916, 1917 time period. Some old adobe. And there's not, they don't have the adobe going all the way up the gable on this one. Hmm. Maybe it's just preference. Whoever's building it, that was their preference. A flag pole. Oh, maybe that was like a tether, tether ball pole or something there. That thing just looks so neat. And that, I guess they, their peak around 1936 or so, they had about 150 students that went here. Yeah, <laughs> big old timber sticking out of a window. <laughs> they have the plastic up on these windows too. So somewhere along the line, people tried putting up plastic to keep the, the elements out. But hey, check out this. I've seen this before in some pictures, but check out this slide. Wow, look at this thing. That is narrow, and the ladder's got, the ladder part's got to be about, what's that, about 15 feet high. And you can see up on top, they just had a, a wood rail along the sides to uh, keep you from sliding off the, the edge. Man. I know as a kid and we had a slide similar to that, we used to sit on wax paper and get some speed going down that thing. Catch some air when we hit that hump. But uh, this looks like it was maybe the outhouses for the students. I wonder what these two poles were. Let's take a look. Yep, it's just a, uh, well, there's a porcelain, but there's no plumbing. It's all just, uh, <laughs> yeah, just a drop, just a pit down there, I guess. Huh. I don't get the porcelain. Maybe this is where the, the seat, kind of like maybe the military when they had a 55-gallon drum below it, they'd bring it out and burn it. You know, thinking about it, there's another set of posts over there. This was probably a, like some sort of basketball court or something. That was just for bas the, the backboards. They're tall enough. That must have been it. This is a playground area. So, And you can also, there is RV camping. A lot of these buildings, um, they'll, you, there's a spot where you can camp next to it. All right, I'm ready to go take a look on the inside. This doesn't look all that old out here. This is 
they have a museum and this to the right is where the museum is going to be but uh, yeah this the south side to the right that was the part built in 1916 1917 take a look in there it's all blocked off so we can't go so wood flooring it's all tore up a lot of adobe showing Okay. You can, oh, you can even see where the chalkboards were. I guess this was grades uh, one through eight. But overall, I mean, there's oh, there's electrical outlet or a, a lights lights hanging down there. See, there's more chalkboard on this wall. But overall, it's holding up pretty well. It's not. There's some new lumber in the back holding stuff up too. I think maybe they tried repairing that back there. Oh, there's a piano. <laughs> I got to check this out. Ooh. That sounds spooky. And check out that old locker right there. They just put a coat in here or something. Well, anyways, let's uh let's come in here, check out this other this is the north side this was built in uh, 1936 so it was a little bit bigger an expansion and this was close to when they had the the peak of their enrollments they would have needed hey, look at that roof still coming down but it's a little bit better in shape a little bit better in shape than the other side is Got some lumber here, a little storage for some restoration on the other side, it looks like. Oh, well, that's a neat old chair. Huh. Well, let's see what's down here. Oh, I don't know, that floor looks pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty rotten. Let me go check it out, see. Yeah, it's, let's see here. Yeah, right there. A little spongy for me. But let's, uh, I'm going to head back out. Yeah, look at that. Well, let's head over to the museum. It's part of this. It was uh, the third part that was added on. And uh, it's, what's this old, looks like an old radio or something, old, old desk. Wow, look at that. But anyways, the museum is just outside. And they established the museum about uh, five years ago, 2019. So this looks pretty neat in here. I don't think I've seen any pictures inside here. Let's check this thing out. Ooh, I can tell right away this is going to be neat. I love old pictures. Oh, that glare is horrible. But let me uh, see if I can get a <laughs> better angle here. Uh, some of the ladies and kids from the old town. Some more. And then we've got some uh, mercantile receipts from 1934. Oh, there's the school back in the day. Wow. Some 1930s pictures of the town, the lake. That looks pretty recent. That's a neat picture, though. Montana camp in the 30s. Some of these cases place. Now I see a spot where that used to be. I don't think that exists anymore because I was looking for that. Check out this hutch. That, that is beautiful. Wow, some little trinkets in there. See if I can, that's at the mine. The workers at the mine, but that's hard to see with the glare. Another, I'll check this painting out. Wow, that looks pretty good. $950. Wow, an old wood stove to <laughs> keep the classroom heated. And, and uh, we have those core samples and panoramic pictures. Yeah, I love taking panoramic pictures and it looks like a topographical map. And there's some old core samples here that looks like some gourds. Wow, look at that. Cool, cool chalkboards, core samples, little lamp. Um, that lamp they said was found here. So that was one that was used in the mines. An old commode, kind of like what the broken ones we saw out in the outhouse. 
some old uh like old old irons sitting on top of this cool gas stove cool I like how they have these chairs one's one's pretty old looking um, I don't know if the others have been refinished but I could just imagine some kids sitting in here getting their lesson in see over here oh those are they put those those are the steel balls that they'd put in the rollers to crush rock looks like some uh, assayers office supplies there some picks oh and a map of the mine check that out see if I can get a good without the glare wow that mine is bigger than I thought it would be look at that man they went deep in the ground holy cow but anyways let's see what else we got here's another painting I'm gonna check this painting out oh first let's see what kind of books we're gonna read <laughs> we've got a, uh, a bunch of uh, readers digest in here what is this desk it has this round thing on the edge what is that some sort of I'm not sure what that is another painting that one's like nine hundred and eighty five dollars it looks like it's another nice painting by the same guy uh, gotta sign in here's a check or a check-in book gotta do that as I was signing in I, I noticed how quiet it is here and we still I still haven't seen just two cars have come in all day but I was expecting um, more people out here but anyways, um, yeah, that was a neat museum there. That was, was real interesting and quiet. But the next place I want to go to has a, a really neat history to it. And it happened in the 1920s, 1921 era. This is the, uh, the third mercantile store that was built. And the history that it has is that there were two double hobbies two double homicides <laughs> easy for me to say um, one in 1920 and the other in 1921 but yeah they uh some bandits coming up from Mexico came in and uh, killed the owners of the store each time now on one of them there was a an eight-year-old girl their daughter um, they they shot at her so they thought that they killed her and uh, she was faking though she she pretended like she was dead so I can imagine that these guys came in through this door here to rob then they they shot them thought they killed uh, the eight-year-old daughter but uh, she was able to get out and let people know what happened check this thing out this is an I believe it's an ice maker they probably had uh, cold freezing salt water flowing around and then that was cold enough to freeze the fresh water that would be sitting in those containers yeah. this was part of the ice room and uh, they also had a post office right in this area too now up here they also had some apartment housing so I'm I'm uh, thinking that this is probably what this was maybe for some family workers because the single men were down at the bunk houses so maybe this was for some uh, families maybe that lived in here not much left looks like maybe that was where shower was but yeah not a lot left now and off in the distance we're gonna walk down there that's the the old jail um, but first I'm um, just up the hill a little bit is another interesting little house this is called the Pr primer house um, the, the style they built was they called it like the shotgun style because it was mostly a straight line everything was quick and easy to build um, they're usually 12 by 14 12 and a half by 14 or something check this out this more adobe and it was built in I think they say between 1916 and 1920 check this out there's a let's find a little bit closer here but that sign 
You can see a picture of what the house looked like back in 1926 and some of the residents that lived here. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, they just built. It's almost like they build it up and you can see in here too the wood that's sticking into the adobe to hold everything in place. So they, they work those windows in with the, the adobe masonry. <laughs> These old hinges. Those would be kind of neat. It would be kind of neat to, to take home if you could. Uh, but I say leave it in place. Let other people enjoy it. There's more another room back here. You can see the, the house. Same picture as the other one. Yeah, this wall is just falling over and it's just melting away into melting back to the earth. How cool is that? Well, it looks they had like a little it's that cactus inside of the timbers. I wonder what that was all about. I thought I saw something back there. Yeah, off in the distance. Let me go check this out. You can just kind of wander through the trails and find just random buildings that throughout the years they just fall apart and then maybe that was a shed of some sort. Nobody really knows. There's nothing on my map telling me what that was. But anyways, the jail is down this way so I want to make a quick stop down there. Just walking down this way just kind of makes you wonder how many people have actually these old parts. Somewhere down here was the post office. I'm wondering if this maybe was a foundation to the post office. Uh, you can see that was the mercantile store up there in the ice room. But, um, yeah, I just wonder how many people, I was just trying to see if there's, I'm not sure what this was, maybe this was part of the post office. Supposedly it's in the southeast corner, but anyways, I just wonder how many people have walked down this road over the years to get into town. So. But anyways, here's the jail. Now, now this isn't as old, quite as old as the rest of it, of the town. Uh, this was built in 1936, and it cost about 600 bucks. Before the, before the jail, if they had some drunken, disorderly guys or something, they would... Uh, Tie them to a tr just chain them to a tree till they cooled off or got sober. But anyways, here's uh, this is inside. This is like kind of like uh, I don't know, maybe like a reception, some place to talk to the prisoner while he's inside here. I can't see anything inside, and it's locked, so we can't open it up. Like an old bedpost sitting there against the wall, some old. Uh, Pipes, lumber, that's too bad. Wish I could have got inside here. This reminds me a lot, if you've been to Quartzsite, um, this reminds me a lot of the jail there. What's this old, uh, check out this door. We've got this metal on the outside. Wonder if that was just more protection to keep people from trying to bust in. Yeah, not a lot to see on the outside. It's all just concrete, thick concrete walls. That might be a neat little picture. There's rebar in the windows to keep them from getting out. And they said uh, they, because there was no heat, no bathroom inside, that it was most, most likely just used as a holding cell until they can stop by and pick them up and take them to a bigger town for a more permanent holding. Well, I think that's going to do it. I'm going to head back to camp as the sun's starting to get down a little bit. I'll go relax a little bit and see if I might be able to... Oh, hey, up here, that's that's where we checked in this morning. And that's the old courthouse. And they had a, a guest room up there. So if a VIP or somebody came into town, that's where they would have stayed. But I am going to uh, get back to camp now and relax a little bit. Wow. What a fun day this was. Couldn't ask for a better time. Got to hang out with 
friend I've known since I was a kid. I got to explore old buildings, ruins. I got to hang out, which I like to do, and take pictures. Catch a sunset and just enjoy the scenery around. But uh, I think it's time to get back, get a little campfire started, relax, visit some more. And uh, who knows, maybe we can get the uh, host to sing us a song or two around the campfire. So uh, I'm going to check out, be safe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Sweet Arizona.